What's up gamers, today uh, it's me, Verdant Wilson, and uh, Willow, uh, here to deliver a poo poo garbage video uh, about the new beta content. Alright, let's uh, get started. So overall, there's new void equipment, new shadow equipment, uh, there's gonna be a new worm boss in the caves, and uh, but first we're gonna start on the surface with wabbits. Let's go find us a wabbit. Oh, a wabbit. So if you hypothetically uh, dumped a bunch of carrots inside of a rabbit den, and every time you feed it a carrot, you have a chance of the bunny screaming, which is very epic. And then, <gasps> what is that? The benevolent rabbit king. Now, with the rabbit king, you can buy three things. First is the Warren Wreath. I'm just gonna craft all three of the items real quick. So, the Warren Wreath, uh, it's a helmet you can wear that's really stupid, and it just makes it so that rabbits are not scared of you. So, if I uh, give myself a bunch of rabbits, you can see, see, they don't run away from me. I am one with the wabbits. Anyway, so that's what the helmet does. Here you go, Willow. Have a helmet. Next is the coat of carrots. Now, what the coat of carrots does, it's basically a one man band, but only works on bunny men. So, if you have bunnies and you have this coat of carrots, they will follow you. Here they are, following me. Except it's daytime, so they're gonna go to sleep. And now they're following me again. Kill the evil spiders, wabbits. Epic. Alright, that's what that does. Now you have probably the most OP part of the update, maybe? So you have this borrowing horn. When you play it, what it does is if you look carefully, you see this little hole just appeared. Portable den. Wow, cool. Uh, I'm gonna put some seeds and, uh, what else am I gonna put in there? Seeds. Uh, some carrots. Uh, Mr. Mitha put the helmet in there. I'm gonna put a coat of carrots in there. Cool. And then you go along uh, about your day. And then you go over here. You teleport Mr. Mitha over here with you. And then say, oh, you know what, Mr. Mitha? I am hungry for carrots. So you blow the horn again. And then, uh, oh, the hole spawned here. And what's this? All of the items you put in there are still in the hole. So this basically acts exactly like the shadow magic uh, storage. As in... Uh, you have another form of storage, which is this rabbit hole. So these items will always stay in the rabbit hole. Like, they'd never get deleted until you pull them back out. Um, and you have different inventories for the overrunning caves. So in the early game, when you run out of inventory space, uh... Oh my gosh, the worm just ate Corvus. The oh, he's back. What, what on earth? Kill him again. Oh my gosh, he ate Corvus again. Goodness gracious. Oh, he's back. We'll get to the worm later. Don't worry about it. Wilson one hit it. Very nice. Good job, Wilson. All right, anyway, say in the early game, uh, you're exploring and then you run out of in inventory. You can play the burrowing horn um, and then you can put your stuff in it. And then uh, whatever time in the future, when you find finally get to base on like day 10 or 20 or whatever, you can just pull, uh, blow the horn again to access the hole with all your items in it. So that's really good. And also, if you're gonna go into the ruins or just the caves in general, you also have a separate uh, rabbit hole inventory in the caves. So you come down, then uh, for example, uh, you go to the ruins, you get a bunch of ruins gear. I just have too many Thorsite clubs, goodness gracious. Simply play the burrowing horn, the, the portable den appears, slow, throw a bunch of it's also like clubs in there. And then once you get back to the staircase, let's pretend that this was uh, actually in the ruins. Uh, then you get back to the staircase, you go to your base, you unload all your items, then you come back down, you play the burrowing horn again, and then you uh, go into this, and then you grab all of your items. So effectively, it's, it's just 12 storage, and this is separate from the caves and the overworld, as you can see. Uh, the over overworld storage is not shared with the caves, uh, and this is shared between players. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to understate. Uh, this, this is really powerful. This is like really good. It's 12 extra inventory spaces that you can access at any time. For like, for like a general world, you probably want two of these. One for exploring the overworld and then one for inside the caves. Those rabbit holes you spawn with this uh, burrowing horn, they do despawn after two minutes and 30 seconds. So you do need to actually cool them back. But once it disappears, your items don't disappear. Like I said, they just get stored there forever until you pull them out. All right, now let's go back to the rabbit king. So once again, uh, here's the benevolent king. That burrowing horn is not too expensive as well. So you should probably get this. Anyway, uh, if you accidentally attack the king, uh-oh, you've made a mistake. He doesn't have his sound effects yet, but this guy runs always runs away from you except when he tries to drop kick you And otherwise he summons these bunny men uh, which uh, for oh look he drop kicks you So the way to fight this guy is uh, you got to kill the minions and then when he goes to drop kick you You have to dodge him. So you have to wait for him to drop kick you. Oh, there's the drop kick Oh, he missed what an idiot so his horns get stuck in the ground and then you hold F really hard and hopefully you kill him He has 2,000 health. Oh, we got him stun locked. Oh, we got him stun locked. Oh, we got yes Right, and he drops a beard hair monster me and the rabbit king crook. This bad boy uh, does the same damage as the tentacle spike. Kabam! 
51 damage. It does bonus damage versus bunny men, and bunny men will run away from you when you have it equipped. And so that means if you even if you have meat on you, they run away from you. They will not try to attack you. They will always try to wake up. As you can see, 61 damage. Of course, if you attack them, they'll attack back. But uh, if uh, if you have meat on you, then uh, and they, they won't try to attack you. They will simply run away from you because they're scared of the rabbit king crook. Uh, yeah, very cool. And otherwise, it drains the sanity when you attack. All right, cool. Let's move on. I'm sorry, Verdant Wilson. It is me, Winona. I'm here to uh, steal your thunder. All right, it is me, uh, Winona and Woody, back at it again. So, um, they patched void walking so that um, if you try to void walk now by like pushing yourself into the void, um, you just fall. So, it used to be, uh, if you push yourself off the edge now, oh, you just fall. So they patched void walking, but they also just straight up added void walking to the game. So if you're Winona in the overworld, you can use these glasses to um, traverse uh, three tiles worth, up to three tiles worth of water. Um, but now you can also use it in the caves. So you can go like this. Wow, Rose Bridge across the void. That's crazy. Oh no, there's such a gap here. It's so annoying. Let me just uh, dark vestige. Whoa! Uh, don't you hate it when you can't quite get the Agent Guardian? Don't worry about it. Just Dark Vestige. Oh, and you're across. So yeah, now you can use this uh, Rose Bridge to cross gaps in the caves. You can even use it to cross into the atrium if it's close enough, but that's kind of rare. But yeah, you can you can use that to cross uh, the, uh, the cave void now. Very cool. So you can, uh, I forgot, uh, you can actually make actual bridges, even if you're not, oh, Woody fell down, unlucky. If you make some, these new bridges that are expensive, eight rope and four boards for each one, um, you can create actual bridges, um, if you're any player. So, uh, here you go, I could place a bridge across there, please. Bam. That took three, uh, pieces and it makes that. Um, it makes a bridge, which is cool, uh, except when an earthquake happens, your bridge then breaks. So that's not very cool, so it's not too permanent. You can use pillars to protect the bridges, because br uh, the pillars will stop it from taking damage. But otherwise, yeah, creates a surface, pretty cool. Anyway, now, on to worm stuff. Okay, so I've teleported us to the muddy biome, because um, I'm about to show you a new uh, boss. Um, okay, let me just tell Mither. So, like in the overworld, sometimes instead of getting like multiple hounds, you'll get one varglet. Now in the caves, rather than getting multiple um, depth worms, you'll get one big depth worm. Bam! There he is. Ow, goodness! He has 5,000 health, and he acts very similar to the Pugilist from Hamlet. Um, so he has some few interesting mechanics. If you're close to his body while it's moving, it has spiky bits on it, so you will get hurt quite rapidly. Um, otherwise, he can eat you. So if I am unfortunate enough to, uh, uh, I'm going to try and get eaten real quick. If you get hit by him, you get knocked around a bunch. But you can see the attack animations have changed a little bit as well. From the side and back view, it, like, they have a bigger swing, but it doesn't affect animation cancelling. You can still animation cancel just as effectively as before. Oh, Woody, did you just get eaten? Oh, goodness. Is he about to swallow Woody? Oh, he's swallowing Woody! And then Woody gets pushed through his digestive tract, and he gets pooped out the end. That's really funny. And so the worm um, eating you can't kill you. It will only drop you to one health. Um, but still, very deadly. Um, because, yeah, then you're one health when you come out of his digestive digest tract. So let's uh, let's try to get eaten. Nice, I've got eaten. So as you can see, he, sw he, he chews you up, swallows you. You take lots of rapid damage as you travel through his entire body. <laughs> And then you get pooped out. And that broke both of my armor and dropped me to 1 HP, then I died. So every time he digests you- oh goodness, this earth quick man. So every time he digests you, it deals 20 damage, which is, um, a lot. Because it deals it so rapidly. So, uh, now, how do you kill him? Well, uh, basically, if you feed him anything, so you see how he eats anything whenever he digs and whenever he comes out of the dirt. So what we have to do is you have to bait him onto landing on something like that. Now he chews it up, he eats it, and if it's something that's alive, he'll uh, eat it and then swallow it, so he's like kind of vulnerable for longer. So you can make him eat rocks, logs, anything. Oh, he died. Um, you can make him eat anything and he'll stop for a brief moment. And so when he's not moving, you don't get damaged by his spiky body. Here, here little worm, eat some delicious bunny men. Right there, he ate a bunny man. And he, so he swallowed it. So since he ate something kind of like sizable and living, he swallows it. And then when he poops out, you see, he poops out three manure. Isn't that just so funny? Oh, he ate another bunny man. Oh no. So now he's going to chew it and uh, swallow. And then he does the poopies as well. And his drops, he can drop various gems and he can sometimes drop soul sight, monster meat, and lots of bone shards, like 15 bone shards. So that's the, the depth worm boss. It's pretty neat. 
Very, very cool. Mythla wants us to perish to so show you all something. Oh my goodness, no way. The ghosts can also void walk now uh, before a ghost can properly get onto the void without cheating. But now you can. Look at that. Wow, cool. All right, so now we're going to talk about post rift content. So, after you kill Ancient Fuel Weaver and uh, add to Charlie's rock collection, uh, hard mode caves gets enabled. So the Ink Blight trio um, start uh, spawning and such. Kabam, he did. Uh, then Charlie says, rocks, please. And then, uh, kabam. Oh my gosh, no wait, shall we? Now hard mode caves are enabled. Uh, and then five days after this, uh, the hard mode, ca hard mode caves actually activate, so it takes five days. Oh, we're getting a cave worm attack. Look at that. Oh, wow. It's day five or ten, and we legit got a natural greater depth worm. Wait, we got two? Okay, so we might have got two depth worm. We got two depth worm bosses naturally? I'm guessing that's because we, um... <laughs> Because we uh, enabled hard mode caves, I don't think you're meant to get this many. I imagined you would get like one per wave, but we just got two and no normal depth ones. But uh, we'll abandon these for now. But yeah, also it's probably because multiplayer. Uh, right, so once you've unlocked hard mode caves, these resources become uh, accessible from killing like uh, the Ink Blight trio and doing other things like interacting with the Nightmare Rift that will spawn. And uh, once you get these, you can make yourself the Shadowcraft plinth at an ancient pseudoscience station. Let's let's pretend we were in the caves. Hey, look, an ancient altar. Once you get to the ancient altar, you can make your shadow craft plinth. It requires some nightmare fuel. Kabam! Shadow craft plinth. And once you make that, you can put that down and look at all these new recipes. So, the new recipes that we're gonna go through are the gloomerang, the shadow mool, the beefalo gloom bell, and the nightmare saddle. Let's start with the beefalo stuff because I don't. Re I think these ones are fine, but they're not the main attraction. So let's start with the beefalo bell that Mr. Mitha just made. Wow, I love my rider beefalo. I'm going to call him Cat Person Television. Hello, Cat Person Television. I sure love Cat Person Television uh, that I've hooked with my beefalo gloom bell. So if you have the beefalo gloom bell, it requires two dark tires, four dreadstone, and five pure horror to make, and a shadow atrium. Yes, the same shadow atrium you get from killing a tier three uh, shadow piece. Um, and I've hooked it to my beefalo, and then if it died to a wild a uh, batch of shadow meteors. It's very tragic, but it happens. The wild meteors be doing this sometimes. Um, you can see Cat Person Television's corpse is still there. If I use my beefalo bell on the corpse, it will revive the beefalo. Oh my goodness. And then the beefalo bell gets consumed. So yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Then you put the saddle back on and you're just as good as new. But if you want to revive it again, you need to make another beefalo bell. Now, let's talk about this new saddle. So, this saddle is not as fast as the Glossomer saddle. It's a little bit slower, but it's faster than other saddles. It also grants plus 18 planar damage. It gives your beefalo shadow footprint, which is cool. And it uh, gives 60% damage reduction, and it gives some flat planar defense. So basically, this is like the ultimate endgame saddle, unless you really want maximum speed, at which point you go for Glossomer saddle still. But otherwise, this is like the best saddle in the game, except not, like, not quite the best uh, 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 speed saddle. 68 damage, so 50 damage physical and 18 planar damage. So here's a salamander. Bam, 74 damage. We got a damage bonus because of the saddle, because we're shadow lined and that's lunar aligned. All right, now let's talk about the Gloomerang. The Gloomerang does not require a shadow atrium, just pure horror and the dark tatters. For this one, I'm also going to make the void cowl because it buffs it a little bit. So with no other buffs, this Gloomerang will deal a whole lot of damage. 57 damage. Now, you, you can see that the damage actually changes. The closer you are, the less damage it does. So 57, down to 51, down to uh, 39. Well, it just keeps going down until you get into melee distance, then it does 11 damage. So basically, stay far away as possible and you will do maximum damage. But as well, you can only fire out three doom, you can only have three doomerangs out at one time. As you can see, once there are three doomerangs out, it goes on cooldown, so you can't throw more than, like, three can't be active at one time. You can get around this by simply just having another Doomerang. So if I hold F versus this thing, I can go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like that, just switch between two Doomerangs. That way you're constantly attacking. Now, its damage isn't 
amazing. Um, 57 is whatever, but <clears throat> that is partially planar damage. And we do 28 planar damage. So there you go, 28 of that damage is planar. Very cool. But if we then equip the Void Cal, the Void Cal um, buffs like some of the damage, but not all of it. So now rather than 57, we're doing 67 damage. Uh, which is neat. So this is a cool weapon because it doesn't require ammo. It just has durability, which of course can be repaired using the void repair kit. Very cool. If you're not playing Wolfgang, this weapon is going to be like your best in slot when you want a ranged weapon. But if you don't need a ranged weapon, like for example, phase three Cecil Champion, ranged weapons are pretty good because Celestial Champion is very slippery. Oh my good, Celestial Champion has arrived. So as you can see, against like phase three Cecil Champion, you don't have to dodge all that much and you can constantly attack because, um, you know, uh, you're attacking at range, so the Celestial Champion does not dodge you. So that's a good one example of where this is actually pretty good. Now, on to the main event. The Shadow Mool. This requires 5 Pure Horror, 3 Jetstone, 2 Dark Taz, and 1 Shadow Atrium. Making this bad boy is interesting. So it starts off at level 0. Now, every time you kill 3 bosses with this, it levels up, up to a maximum of level 3. Meaning, you need to kill 9 bosses with it um, to make it level 3. Now, bosses count as everything that triggers, like, epic music, except mini bosses like Spider Queens and Tree Guards and Lord of the Fruit Flies. So, basically, you want to be killing, like, Ancient Guardian, Deerclopses, uh, moose goose things like that, but once you do kill nine bosses, let me just cheat really quick I'm gonna spawn three deer clopses gonna one hit them all So as long as you get the lethal hit then it counts as an upgrade So you can see on my shadow mool it now has one eye which means you know It's level one so it's doing 52 damage the shadow reaper does 56 So right now the shadow reaper is just better and both gain the bonus from the void cowl So the void reaper goes up to 88 with Winona and this goes up to 84. What about level 2? Let me just spawn 3 more Deerclopters. 1, 2, uh, 3. So as you see, it now has 2 eyes on it. Uh, so now it's level 2. Uh, now what's our max hit going to? Going to a nice 88, which is exactly, or well, on par with the Shadow Reaper. And finally, if we get it to level 3, kill 3 more Deerclopters. Finally, your Shadow Maul has achieved level 3 with the 3 eyes, and it is dealing a maximum with the Void Cal, so it's getting its damage buff of 92, which does surpass the Shadow Reaper. So, this is better damage than the Shadow Reaper once it's level 3. But there's a few more hidden mechanics. So, first of all, what if I just, like, had really low health? Oh no, I hate having low health. That means I'm going to die, right? Well, if I once again just spawn in a Deerclops, you'll see something just a little bit silly. <laughs> Wigfrid who? <laughs> that that's bugged for sure. <laughs> that, that is not intended to be that strong. Um yeah, you're you're seeing that right. Uh you regen a ton of health. 17 health per hit. So now you can just hold F, you can just heal all of the damage you take. In fact, take the void cowl off. We don't need armor. Take the 75 damage hit to the face and you could just heal it all back, lickety split. It does drain your sanity, but who cares? Because, you know, you could just heal it all back. Because, you know, you also heal off of shadow creatures. Oh no, now I'm insane because it drained my sanity. Oh, it doesn't matter. I deal loads of damage and I still regenerate 17 health per hit. Goodness gracious. Um, around half of this thing's uh, damage is planar. Just gonna tank the Terra Beak. At level 3, it's dealing uh, 40, oh, 51 planar damage. 51 planar damage. And then otherwise you're dealing 92 damage. So, you know, that's a nice 41 physical and 51 planar. That's kind of nuts. Anyway, there's a little bit more hidden mechanics with this uh, axe. So it is very powerful and has a disgusting amount of lifesteal regeneration. Way better than Wigfrid. Um... Now, there's a little hidden mechanic that I'm going to show you. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and skip um, five days. As you can see, the Shadow Maul durability is going down, and I'm not even using it. So, what exactly is going on? Well, behind the scenes, this Maul has a hunger mechanic. So, behind the scenes, this thing has 500 hunger, I think, and drains 0.3 hunger per second. Whenever you kill anything, it will um, restore 50 hunger. When it is at zero hunger, as you can see, the durability drains really fast. So as long as you kill something with it, then it is happy. So what we're going to do, we're going to, and we're going to kill the spider. And there you go, it has satiated its hunger, so its durability drain has ceased. Um, but soon it will start again. And of course, you can uh, repair the maul with the shadow repair kit. But what happens when it breaks? Well, gamer, when this axe breaks, 
unfortunately, it does actually lose its um, level. So, you killed nine bosses, you'll get it to level three. But if you let it die, which we're going to, I'm going to speed up the world real quick. If this thing is at 100% hunger, it takes three and a half days for it to start starving. So, if you're not, if it's level three and you're not going to use it for three and a half days, I'd recommend just bundling it up. Because if you bundle it up, it pauses all of its hunger drain and stops it from draining. So, yeah, just bundle it if you're not going to use it for three and a half days. But uh, after that, all you need to do is kill ten creatures to fully restore its hunger. Anyway, so bundling wrap is always uh, very good, as always. But let's see what happens when it drains to zero. Other than it screaming at you because it really wants you to feed it because, you know, it's dying. Once it does die, kabam, it breaks, goes to 0% durability, but it's okay, you can repair it. But it's not okay because now your axe is back at 0%. Um, and means like zero kill count. So you have to go kill nine bosses again to get it back to level three. So you never want it to break. This breakage even accounts for if you break it from hitting too much and not repairing it, that also resets its progress. And of course, if you let it starve to death, it also resets its progress. So yeah, never let this thing break. Otherwise, that's the axe. It's the new best in slot melee weapon. Um, depends what you're fighting because sometimes the gloom rang is best in slot because it's a ranged weapon and therefore also the howlitzer is uh, potentially very good and uh it has a few interesting things with woody because you know woody has an axe that he likes very much every time woody chops with this axe he loses 15 sanity so that's 15 sanity every time he chops which is kind of crazy speaking of chopping when this thing chops at level three it chops at a higher efficiency each time it uh, levels up so if i just quickly uh one hit nine deer clopses one second there go i just one hit nine deer Right, he's back to level three. Um, if I chop this tree, two, three, four, five, six, seven chops to chop down a tree that would otherwise require 15 chops. If you want to watch the rest of the testing slash react stream, uh, you can check it out in the description. So that is what this mold does. Uh, very cool, very good weapon, best in slot most of the time, depending who you're playing and what you're killing. But otherwise, let's move on. So if you're playing Wolfgang, this is the kind of damage you're doing. You know, no, no Wally Spice, 207 damage. That's, uh, you know, not bad. Poor Miss Wiggles couldn't dream of such damage damage. Oh no guys, he hit me for 75 damage. Don't worry about it, because I've just regenerated all the health anyway. So, um, yeah, this weapon's kinda, kinda dumb. <laughs> This is no armor. I'm just I'm just taking the hits to the face. I imagine this regeneration will get nerfed, but we'll find out, I suppose. So even if, by the way, even if your axe is level at zero, you still regenerate. You just regenerate less, and you still do crazy amounts of damage. So <laughs> anyway, uh, Mr. Mitha is telling us something. All the map variants and anything that's paper-like are erasable, so you can turn them back into Papyrus. Also, I'm going to stay as Wolfgang for the rest of the video, because he's very powerful. So if we just travel to a rift wheel quick. Ah, we have just found a new enemy. Oh, goodness gracious, another one. So this is a um, uh, an Icar. They spawn from these uh, Shadow Rifts, which spawn in hard mode caves. Oh, goodness, they just keep spawning. Oh, my goodness, there's so many of them. Now, do note that my axe is level zero. But the, thing, the cool thing with these things are... Oh, goodness, I'm trapped. Oh, I'm trapped and I'm taking damage. The thing with these things are they trap you if you get stuck in them. And otherwise, they also... Ah, dropping on me again! Wigfred, save me! The little blobs uh, slow you down, and it seems that when they drop, they do try to target you. And they also, if you don't kill them fast enough, they do indeed regenerate. So see the blobs that pukes out? They go back inside, and then they re regain their health. So once you start hitting them, you got to make sure to kill it. Man, it's kind of hard to dodge these things. Oh, and oops, I walked into it by accident. Finally, we exterminated them all. I'm not sure if more will spawn, but damn, look at all the nightmare fuel we got. That we didn't cheat any, we didn't cheat any to spawn any of those in. They just spawned that rapidly. So many of them spawned so fast. Yeah, these these icks, they spawn back so fast, these ickers. Anyway, we're gonna ignore this now. That's all for the portals. It's just those new ickers. Oh! New shadow creature! There it is! Oh goodness! So, let me show off this thing's attacks. As you can see, it is swimming under the surface. Oh my goodness, it's so spooky. It looks very cool. And when you, when it teleports, it does that. See that? It did like a quadruple attack. Oh, I killed it. So it only has like 800 or so health or 700 health. So yeah, these things lurking nightmare. These can show up during the nightmare phase now. It's pretty cool. And as you see, when it teleports, it does that attack where it sends like two fins your way. All right, so it bites. And then when you slap it, you see it does that like fin attack. Isn't that cool? So bite, aggro animation, bite, slap. Oh, that time it just teleported normally. But like I said, bam, do that. Oh, it does a little fin attack. And of course you can dodge it by, um, you know, moving. Like that, wow. 
Anyway, so that's the new nightmare creature. Oh, Mr. Mytha got one as well. Don't worry, Mr. Mytha, I will save you. See, like Mr. Mytha said, that new nightmare creature only spawns from the fishers. It won't spawn from you being insane. Also, you might have noticed, when you get hit, you have a different flinch animation now. So if I spawn a spider, you'll see, when I get hit, I kind of get, like, get pound- I push- get pushed back a little bit. So the flinch animation has been changed. From the front view, it looks the same, but from the side view, it's different. Along with the attack animation, from the back, you have like a bigger swing on weapons rather than it being just up and down, which is interesting. But you can still animation cancel just fine. All right, next is a mob that's kind of weird. It's called a Shadow Mimic. Um, we don't know how to spawn them naturally, but I assume in the nightmare phase, they just start appearing. But, um, all right, Mr. Mytha, these are all real um, items, as you can see in the floor there. Oh, do you see that little black dot on the floor there? It's running around and it's gonna choose an item to mimic. Look, there's its little eye. We will follow it. If you stand on it and squish it, um, it kills it. So that's how you kill it, you just step on it. And so now it's targeted an item, here it comes. Oh, bam. It just duplicated that lazy forager. So if you pick up this fake lazy forager, it, it looks like it's a normal lazy forager, right? It's, it's like a normal lazy forager. I mean, it's not doing anything right now, but the trick is, uh, when when you actually go to use it, um, the mimic will um, transform and you were pranked because this is not the real weapon. This is not the real item, I mean. Because if you try to like deconstruct it... Oh, it was actually the mimic, so you've been pranked. So the idea here... Oh, I just killed it because I stepped on it. The idea here is that if you leave items on the floor... Oh, look, another mimic. If you leave items on the floor, it will duplicate and trick you into picking them up, and the item is a fake one, so it doesn't actually do anything. So these items, if they, they, if you pick up a duplicated one, they don't actually do anything. Oh, it duplicated the mag, so now if I equip this duplicated mag... Oh, look, I've got light and durability. Now, it is actually giving me speed bonus. Mm. Yeah, so I imagine it's probably not meant to act as the actual item, because it, it, right now, this is acting like a real magiluminescence. Um, it's probably not meant to do that. So right now, the mimicked items are working like as intended, well, as they normally do. So if we look here, we've got some mimics and a construction amulet on the floor. Let's see if it tries to dupe the construction amulet. There we go. So now I'm gonna pick up the duped construction amulet. Then I'm gonna try to craft. So using the dupe construction amulet, if I try to make a Thulsite crown, yeah, it's giving me the full effect. Um, so even if this transforms back, I still win because I just got free uh, uh, crafting um, reduction. So that's probably a bug. It's probably meant, not meant to happen. But hey, maybe it is intended. And if you're smart, you can dupe things like construction amulets. But basically, eventually it will turn back uh, into the mimic when you do certain things to it. Um, but yeah, not, it seems to not be transforming back. Anyway, moving on. So we don't know how to spawn this next one, so we're just gonna show it. So I've heard that um, it spawns in, like, around the spiders in the caves. So I'm not sure how to spawn this thing naturally, but um, this snake is really mean. He's, an, he's another ink blight. As you can see, he jumps, spins, and then does like four or five chomps. So there's the jump, spin, jump, spin, chomp. Oh, game crashed. Cool. Alright, so back to the snake. He does- oh, look, let's, uh, so he's missing his sound effect, but, uh, let's- let's watch what he does. So he does the jump, spin, bite! And then he can be a bit meaner than that as well. He goes jump, spin, bite, bite! He does many bites. He's a very- a very mean ink blight. Even if you dodge the jump, he- he'll then bite in a different direction. But, uh, luckily for us, uh, I'm very powerful, so you dodge the bites and the jumps. And then we can do lots of damage, because I'm Wolfgang, so I kill things way too fast. Uh, yeah, so Wolfgang's very cool. Otherwise, he drops the, the pure horror, the dark tatters, and the nightmare fuel. So cool, another mob. Oh my goodness, we just got- we got him again. By the way, uh, when you- when this thing eats things, like gears and stuff, you don't get them back. Like, it will eat them and digest them. They're gone for good. So be careful what this thing eats. Because, you know, you're not going to get it back. Um, there was actually one more thing that I haven't showed you yet. Oh, hey, look. Bright shades. Look look how fast I'm going to delete these bright shades. I don't even have the shadow affinity. The power of Wolfgang. So the last thing we didn't show you is a rabbit. Another... Another way to get the Rabbit King. So I'm going to spawn 100 Rabbit Holes because this Rabbit is rare. There he is. There, see that one with the horns? So without any speed bonus, you can just go pick it up. Pick up Fortress Rabbit. Uh, so you can catching up, catching up, catching up, catching up. Yoink. And uh, as you see, so I think something's meant to happen. But for right now, he just transforms into the, the um, Rabbit King. So yeah, 
Uh, the Burrowing Horn is really good. Uh, the Shadow Maul is really good, and that's the update. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them. I did not delve too deep into the numbers because things will almost definitely um, get changed. Uh, but otherwise, I'll reply to comments uh, with things that I know. And, uh, you know, leave a comment if the beta gets updated because I probably won't make an update video about this beta directly, but I'll make a video about, um, you know, uh, end game content overall because that's that's fun. Anyway, I'm leaving now. Uh, say goodbye, Mether. Thank you, Mether, for testing with me, and thank you to my Twitch chat who I uh, tested this with on the day after the release. Um, yes. All right. Goodbye.